Hey guys, welcome to my character guide for Dreadhunger's resident crack shot, the Royal Marine. In this video, I'll be covering the Marine's character basics, his primary and secondary goals, the expectations others have of him in game, and provide some suggested day one pathing options for each map that you can try out in your own matches. There will also be a section at the end with some general Thrall advice and tactics you can try when you're playing the Marine as Thrall, focusing primarily on blending into the crew as the Marine. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel for more Dreadhunger videos. It really helps me out and you'll get notified whenever I post a new video by pressing the little bell. Now this is the second of eight character guides I'm making for Dreadhunger with the first guide for the captain already being up on my channel. There's still six more guides to make, so please comment below which character you'd like me to prioritize making the next guide for. Now, with all of that said and done, let's get this guide started with Marine's character basics. The Marine is bright red and easy to identify as he's the only crew member that wears this color. He has a large white X on his chest and his shoulders and chest are somewhat thinner than characters like the captain and the engineer. He has a ratty beard and mustache with longer sleeked back hair. When identifying him from far away, look for his posture, running style and head shape. The Marine is slightly hunched forward, which translates to his running style, where his head is forward of where you'd expect it to be. His head is rounded at the top, with his shoulder length hair being easy to identify as it stands out from the haircuts of the other characters. In the brig, the Marine's sleeves are red with bare hands, making him hard to mistake for any other character. Marine starts the game with a loaded flintlock pistol, a powerful ranged weapon that does 52 damage when shot at close range. This damage does, however, drop off the further your target is away from you. The Marine requires ammunition to reload this weapon after each shot, and the flintlock pistol will need repairing in the workbench after its sixth consecutive shot, as it breaks and will now misfire any shots you try to fire with it until it's repaired. The Marine's character bonus reloads his firearm 20% faster. This makes Marine a powerhouse ranged fighter, as he will be able to fire his weapon more frequently and spend less time in the vulnerable reloading state. Marine's primary goal in a game of Dreadhunger is to arm himself and be prepared to handle problems that arise on the expedition ship. He keeps chaotic crewmates in line and restores order to the crew should anyone misbehave. A good Marine should assert himself when conflict erupts and be prepared to intervene should violence occur on ship. Focus down the cause of the violence first, then encourage discussing the issue whilst the players are separated. But Marine can only do this if he's a powerful threat on the ship and is willing to get involved. Of course, understanding what to do and how to handle chaos on ship isn't always intuitive. So I'm gonna cover exactly how you can do this and what are some steps that you can follow to best handle difficult or chaotic situations that come up whilst you're on ship. Chaotic behavior really shouldn't occur too often on the expedition ship without a thrall being involved. But it can be difficult to identify the root of a problem as skilled thralls will manipulate crewmates into creating chaos to throw you off their scent. Learning to tell the difference between a thrall creating intentional chaos and a crewmate being manipulated into making chaos is a skill that you will develop over time. If you aren't confident on who the source of the chaos is, it may be best to take a step back and observe before acting on your gut instinct. It's also perfectly okay to let conflicts act themselves out without interfering, but note who you believe the cause of the chaos was. Then when the game ends, note who the actual thralls were and see how accurate your instincts were. If you have the ability to, recording your games using software like OBS can be a great way to rewatch the chaotic moments back with the knowledge of who the real thralls were and observe what they did or said to cause and prolong any chaos that occurred. This will help you improve at catching thralls and hone your gut instinct for future matches. Now, if two chaotic players cannot come to an understanding within a reasonable time frame, state that both players must leave the ship right away to go collect two coal and return it to the ship. 
Sending chaotic players out on their own little productive private missions gives crewmates a chance to cool down from their heightened emotional state and thralls a chance to weigh up the value of actually returning to the ship at all and attempting to blend back in. More often than not, thralls will simply not return and possibly even try to kill a crewmate who's off on their own. And you'll have your answer as to who the thrall is. Another good technique to use when one player in particular is creating problems on ship is downing the chaotic player and putting them in a bed to recover. This shows that you're not putting up with their bullshit, but you're also not a thrall who's just killing them as a opportunistic kill. Just ensure you do defend them during their vulnerable state. I'd encourage you taking them to the bed in the captain's quarters and locking the door for maximum security. This gives the player a chance to calm down and recognize their weakened state. This will hopefully help them to rejoin the crew if they are a crewmate and to start doing what you're asking of them and regain order to the ship. If your health is ever too low on ship, don't be afraid to ask the doctor for a syringe or to take the time to search nearby doctor bags to create your own. Regular food consumption will also keep your health up nice and high for any conflicts that arise. So just to recap all of that, as Marine, keep the order and extinguish the chaos on ship. Do not, however, give your own life to keep the peace, as a marine without his gun is the weakest, most useless character in the game, and you risk giving a thrall your powerful weapon. Marine's secondary goal is to gather coal and collect other useful resources, just like any other non-food provider. In the case of Marine, I like the idea that he could be a solid secondary healer of sorts, and a source of antidotes. So don't be afraid to loot any doctor bags you encounter, and prepare a handful of antidotes or syringes for the crew. Keeping your health up as high as possible constantly is a priority for Marine, as he's a big target for early thrall attacks given he carries the highly desired early flintlock pistol. Keep yourself strong and highly alert to give yourself the best chance of survival. Try not to wander off on your own too far as your pistol isn't nearly as strong against cannibals as you'd think and you're vulnerable to calculated thrall strikes. Now, when playing the role of Marine, the other explorers will likely have a few expectations of you. These are expectations that have been developed over almost two years of Dreadhunger's meta development and are borderline impossible for new players to know on their own. One of the beauties of the Marine is, as a general rule, there isn't a real hard and fast expectation for the character in terms of what he needs to contribute. Sure, he should bring back any coal he finds or make a few antidotes, but it's going to be rare that an explorer will kill the Marine for not doing his job, so to speak, on the first few days. However, there are a few expectations on what the Marine will loot and how he will act on the first day. Ammo crates, which are a source of gunpowder, are commonly seen as the property of the marine, particularly on the first day. This is because the marine can use gunpowder to craft flintlock ammunition for his pistol. Other players do not have the same excuse, and it raises red flags in the eyes of the crew should another player be seen looting ammo crates, particularly on day one, even if that player intends to throw any gunpowder they find into the water. So one expectation other explorers will have for the marine is to loot and or monitor any ammo crates in his starting area. It's a small expectation that can have a major impact on the game if executed correctly, as it could give valuable insight into who the thralls are. Another expectation other explorers will likely have for you is for the marine to have at least one full stack of five ammunition for his pistol in his inventory, if not more, as evidence he used the gunpowder he looted correctly. You may be asked to show the ammunition you have crafted when you return to the ship, so take a step back and drop the bullets on the ground, one at a time, calmly showing you have done the right thing with the gunpowder you looted. This is by no means surefire proof that you still don't possess thrall materials, but it helps build your resume as a more trusted crewmate, and will be an important alibi should the boiler get sabotaged when you're on board. Any other resources you manage to return to the ship will also boost this resume as you are contributing to the expedition's progress.
With all of this information in mind, I want to run through some day one parving options for each map that I'd encourage you to try out in your own games as a crewmate marine. First up, The Expanse. Start the game by putting your coal in the boiler and heading to the front of the ship. Wait for the ship to reach the first ice cap and jump off, heading in the direction of the cave immediately on your left. Loot the two ammunition backpacks on the ground of this cave and share any arrows you find with the hunter. Loot one, if not two, of the doctor bags near the tents if available, then loot the gunpowder crate and resource crates tucked away over by the wall here. Path back towards the river and loot the gunpowder crate up ahead as well as the one behind the shelter. And there's also another ammunition backpack that you can loot up by the coal sled. Collect any wood you find along the way and loot any other available supplies, namely iron scrap, and craft ammunition, a melee weapon, and possibly a barrel at the workbench in the weathered shelter. Try to keep an eye on who goes up the ice wall nearby and note how long they are up there. Depending on what you find, consider making an ice axe as your melee weapon to ensure no totems are built up there, as you can go up and check when the player returns. From here, push to the middle island, loot any coal, wood and iron scrap you find, and return to the ship when your inventory is full. Whilst on ship, watch the comings and goings of crewmates like a hawk. Note who enters the captain's quarters and boiler room, and keep an ear out for kegs being thrown at the front of the ship. Also take the time to make yourself an antidote if you got lucky in the doctor bags you looted. Ask the other players on board what they've managed to bring back and if they'd seen any of the missing crew members on their journey. Your goal is to gather as much information as possible and solve any problems that come up on ship, be it hull breaches that you can fix with your nails and wood or crew conflicts where players are being particularly dodgy or caught performing thrall tasks. Make sure you get yourself a stew or two or heavily pressure the cook to make one if he's being neglectful. Any players who do not return to the ship that night are prime thrall suspects and should be heavily observed when they do return to ensure they don't perform any thrall actions on the ship. The ship should move forward during the night and you can start organizing a small group of crew members to go out with you in a select direction when morning breaks to keep yourself and others safe from thrall attacks on this massive map. Next up, the approach. The Marine has a couple of good day one parving options on the approach that I rotate between when I'm playing Marine myself. Which one you choose to use really depends on the game experience of your fellow explorers, your personal ambition, and your taste for blood. For the sake of this video, I'll outline my recommended parving for marines who are relatively new to the character and are prioritizing their own personal survival. But I will loosely describe the very hard difficulty parving option for marines who are looking for an early challenge to spice up the approach for themselves. So, as usual, at game start, put your coal in the boiler and head to the front of the ship, ready to jump off when the ship gets close enough to that first ice cap. Path towards any coal sleds you see up ahead and make mental notes of who loots any coal sleds you miss out on. Strongly urge any players you see looting coal to return to the ship with what they find and note who runs off with coal as they are a prime thrall suspect for doing this very typical thrall strategy on this map. When ready, just head back to the ship with the coal that you found and move the ship forward. From here, you have two options. Night isn't far off, so you could push down the right hand side ice cap and search the two small pieces of land that are sort of indented into the wall where there are supplies, including an ammunition crate in the second indent along. You can then return to the ship with coal and the supplies you need to arm yourself. Your other option is to push up to the broken ship. But if you do this, ask someone to accompany you, as this is a much more risky path to go, as thralls accompanied by cannibals will have no problem killing you up there on your own. Many PvP thralls will be desperate to source themselves a powerful ranged weapon, given that PvP is typically a thrall's most common strategy on the approach. Assuming you make it to the broken ship alive, gather the two nearby gunpowder crates, try looting any resource crates you find lying around, and prioritizing making that axe and flintlock ammunition to defend yourself with. 
return to the ship when you can and prepare for a night on the ship where you will observe other player behaviors, eat stew, and make note of who failed to return that night. The ship should progress during the night and it's very likely that one, if not both of the thralls will have revealed themselves in one way or another either by sabotaging the boiler, poisoning the stew, or just outright killing someone off ship by morning. <laughs> now, the very hard difficulty pathing option on the approach includes heading to the very far left cave at game start. You should collect at least 10 rocks on your way over there and go through the cave. You'll then encounter three wolves on the other side. To kill them on your own effectively, Shoot one of the wolves at a distance, which shouldn't aggro the other wolves. Now proceed to throw rocks at the other two wolves, ideally taking minimal damage, as they should howl when they see you, making them an easier target to hit with each rock. From here, you'll have access to a lot of loot, including two ammunition crates, two doctor bags, a bunch of resource crates, and plenty of coal. I'd encourage looting the ammo crates and nearby wooden iron scrap first and rushing to that singular crafting bench in the tent to prepare yourself an axe and extra ammunition, ready to defend yourself from any attacks. If resources are plentiful, you may also be able to craft a barrel or two as well, but be very careful as this campsite is widely known as the Thrall Camp, as it is exceedingly common for at least one Thrall to push up to this campsite on the first day, summon cannibals on whoever pushes up there with them and just kill them. They then get to take all of your hard earned loot, speeding up their Thrall setup time and early power spike. So if you're going to head that way, be ready for the challenge, be ready for the fight and run for your life with any coal you manage to collect if you're given the chance. Finally, the summit. I've tested a lot of different pathing options for Marine on the summit. Left side, right side, middle island, right side, then crossing through Middle Island to get to the left side so I can police players chilling over there, everything. So what I'd recommend is this. At game start, put your coal in the boiler and head to the front of the ship. A quick side note here, in any game you please, you could take the time to police the boiler and make mental notes on who you saw put coal in and who said they put coal in from the captain's quarters. Then if any coal goes missing, you can start putting together a shortlist of which players are most likely to be the player who is holding on to their coal or even stealing coal out of the boiler. But this is optional. So head to the front of the ship and jump off the front when the ship nears ice. Push towards the right side of the river, stopping at the ammunition backpack located here and looting the nearby supply crate and coal sled if unlooted. Break and collect any nearby wood and return your findings immediately to the ship. Hopefully the captain will still be on board or nearby to drive the ship forward with these two pieces of coal you brought, but if he isn't, stash the coal somewhere safely on the ship and head back out towards the right side camp. Here you will be able to loot any remaining supplies as well as the usually untouched ammo crates. You can set yourself up well by crafting yourself an axe and ammunition for your pistol as usual in the workbench. You may also be able to craft a barrel, but it's very RNG based. There is also an additional ammo crate in the right side cave that you can and should loot sooner than later. In any case, your goal is to return to the ship armed and dangerous with valuable resources for the crew. The ship will most likely go right side as the captain watched my captain guide and knows that the ship should go right side for streamlined coal return. So your walk back to the ship should be short. So head back to the ship when your inventory is full and you're set up for the game. When you return to the ship, remember to collect the two pieces of coal you hid on the ship earlier and take your coal into the boiler. It's encourageable to drip feed your coal which is the action of putting coal into the boiler one piece at a time while the boiler is running to minimize the amount of coal that's sabotaged should a sabo occur. But there's plenty of coal on the summit, so it's really whether you can be bothered to sit down there for half a night or not. 
Now, assuming you chose not to sit in the boiler room and drip feed coal all night, instead police the ship as usual by watching who enters the key rooms on the ship, including the boiler, captain's quarters, and kitchen. You could also head to the front of the ship and communicate with the crew to loudly observe who hasn't returned to the ship and where they likely may be. Ensure you get your hands on a stew before the night ends and don't be afraid to assert yourself should any chaos break out. The ship should make solid progress during the night and be prepared to push right or left side second camps in the morning with a small group of trusted players to retrieve coal and other valuables. Going into the second and third days for each of these maps, you want to continue prepping ammunition so you are able to deal with any thralls that pop up, whilst also being able to do heavy damage to the bears protecting Nitro when you reach that point of the game. For the Nitro expedition, Marine should be with that main group, killing the bears and protecting the Nitro carrier from thrall attacks. Though there is a case to be made that he is a prime candidate to defend the vacant ship during this time. His faster reload speed gives him a powerful upper hand in any skirmishes that take place should the thralls try to take the ship while the crew are away. Of course, on the flip side, if you miss your shot and lose the fight, you may have cost your team the game, as after they complete Nitro, they are now going to try to board the ship under heavy gunfire from the thralls who now have your gun. Finally, I have some general advice for playing Marine as a thrall. To be clear, this is advice for blending in as Marine, not playing PvP Thrall with him, as I'm a big believer in the value of blending in, but it isn't exactly obvious how to do so as a new player. Yes, PvP is a solid marine thrall strategy, and yes, it takes practice and experience to play effectively. I just believe helping new players learn to blend in is a more valuable skill to teach and will give them the best possible, most authentic dread hunger experience. It's important to note that this advice cannot possibly guarantee you a good blend game, only give you the understanding you need to play a blend game as Marine and set yourself up for an impactful reveal later in the game. So, blending in as a Thrall Marine, where to begin? Let's start with what spells you should run on your Bone Dagger. I'd encourage you run Doppelganger, Whiteout and Spirit Walk. These are my three default spells I run when blending in as any character, as it gives minimal information away to the crew, given there are no cannibals to hard clear crewmates as guaranteed crewmates, as it's not possible for thralls to summon cannibals directly on their teammates, and whilst Hush is a great spell, it can cause issues should other players see your lips moving during the spell, and can lose any trust you've built with the crew in seconds. Doppelganger is fantastic for providing the crew with faulty or at least unreliable information. Whiteout is great for information denial and delaying the ship, and Spirit Walk provides invaluable map coverage for a blend thrall to sneak off for a few minutes to a location that no one knows you've been to and setting up your game with totems and thrall resource prep without outing themselves to the crew. So now that you're equipped with the right spells, what should you actually do as a blend thrall marine? Well, as we know, Marine has some pretty loose expectations placed upon him. He doesn't need to provide anything to the ship by any particular time frame, which is wonderful for early flexibility and game setup options as a thrall. But the crew will start suspecting you should any early sabotages occur, particularly if they happen after you've visited the ship. A crew who trust each other correctly is a dangerously efficient crew that will blitz the game and leave you in their dust. So successfully inserting yourself as a trusted crewmate is a majorly effective thrall goal. Actions like taking the time to actually craft some early ammunition will build trust with the crew, but outright proving yourself as an innocent is a very, very tricky order. So that's what I want you to focus on as a blend thrall marine, building your relationships and sowing distrust in the crew. Let's focus on the relationship building first. On the first day, I want you to parve the map as a normal crewmate marine would, looting gunpowder crates, ammunition bags, iron scrap, and coal. 
I want you to engage with your fellow crew members, joining in on conversations that pop up or starting conversations with a thought-provoking question. This can literally be anything, but asking someone about something popular like a TV show or a food product is a reliable way to get even the shyest people talking. Set up your game as you normally would a crewmate game, crafting ammunition and a melee weapon, with possibly a barrel or two thrown in there. Use this downtime while you're crafting to talk with the crew, really focusing on building a relationship with those people around you. Fun side benefit here is that even though you'll epically betray them later on, this is a great way to make friends that you can play more and more Dreadhunger with moving forward too, so that's pretty neat. Now doing this will give you a pretty slow start in that you won't have early totems to spam out spells and the ship may make significant progress while you're off bonding, but you will have these valuable relationships that will play a major part in your game moving forward as they will be the voices protecting you should you be sussed at any point. Plus of course your partner can be sabotaging and doing any number of things which is impossible to predict for the sake of this guide, but you do have that extra player on sides slowing the ship down if they're choosing to do so. Now make sure you hold on to some gunpowder that you manage to loot and RNG permitting return to the ship with a decent stack of gunpowder alongside a few coal for the ship and your new friends. This is where we start to sow distrust in the crew. I want you to put in at least one coal and throw your gunpowder in through the captain's quarters chute at the same time. Try to do so without missing a beat, continuing to chat and encouraging other crewmates to contribute their coal as well. The goal of course being to get as many possible suspects for the upcoming sabotage as you possibly can. It might even be encourageable to drop a few coal to the other players in your friendship group so that they can put coal in the boiler as well. While you wait for the sabo, discuss who the other players believe could be the thrall, and hopefully a name that isn't you or your partner gets thrown out. Try to lead the conversation towards the fact that the sussed player has been doing some weird things, including touching the boiler in the captain's quarters or something dodgy like that. So when it sabotages, it's possible that other players will attack the accused players too. So if they do, jump in with a gunshot, possibly executing the player with the support of your fellow crew if they get downed. The beauty of this strategy is it's quite similar to how many Marines play the game when they're a crewmate, in that they're shooting suspicious players and killing explorers on probably minimal evidence. So this shouldn't be perceived as a blatantly thrall act and involves other crewmates in the chaotic gameplay. If you get extra, extra lucky, one of the other crewmates may outright kill the accused player themselves and you'll have an extra crewmate shield to take the heat of the dead player's rage when they're inevitably let out of the brig. Speaking of the brig, wait a small amount of time after the player's killed and cast Doppelganger on someone who's well established as a crew whilst you're on the ship alone. Now go to the brig as the doppel and use a key to release the dead player from their cell. Ensure you dispose of your doppel quickly and effectively out of audio range of the other players using a bear trap afterwards too. This will get the suspicious player out of their cell and ideally back into the mix as a possible thrall. Their alibi for how they actually got out of prison will not exist, given the real player you doppled as will not corroborate the story that he released to them. The beauty of doing this is that they won't sit in prison for two days, proving that they aren't thrall by sheer commitment to being locked up. Having that extra player out in the game gives you a lot of extra room to manoeuvre, either by giving you the ability to sabotage on ship again, as you can blame it on them, or of course giving you the ability to create chaos by focusing on how evil this player must be and that you have to kill them, possibly being able to double kill them if you want to be a real dickhead. <sighs> Bit of wiggle room there. Cast wideouts as often as you like, though not whilst other players have eyes on your sussed target player, as if your teammate follows up with a cannibal call within a short time frame, that proves that the sussed player can't possibly be a thrall. Try to gather supplies to help with future delays, namely gunpowder and gathering coal you don't intend to return to the ship in any hurry. And if you do this well and your teammate is helpful, you should be able to stall the ship for a good while whilst remaining a trusted crew member. Ensure you continue to spend time around the crew, keeping conversations going and maintaining those relationships you built on day one in preparation for the Nitro Expedition.
On the Nitro Expedition, try to position yourself as the Nitro Carrier, making a case and getting your friends that you've built those relationships with to back you up as a trusted Nitro Carrier. Your gun can pop a Nitro in one shot, so if you do get your hands on a Nitro, try to judge the best moment where exploding your Nitro will delay the crew the most amount of time, not necessarily when you can get the most kills in the explosion. Once you're outed as Thrall post-explosion, head back up to Nitro and prepare a few more to run at the crew with Doppelganger before heading to the ship when you're all out of bombs. Your goal now is to shoot and kill the crew as they approach the ship on their way back from Nitro, cast Whiteouts and Doppelganger to confuse the crew and hope you've done enough to defeat them, as it's quite unlikely you'll be able to stop their next Nitro. Every second you remain alive is invaluable, as you can steal supplies, damage and distrust crewmates, and prevent the ship's final progress, so prioritise your own survival at all costs. This blend strategy works particularly well because of the character you're playing. Pretty much by nature, crewmates will somewhat trust marines who simply haven't outright PvP'd someone on the first day to out themselves as the thrall. It just happens so often. But of course, you are trying to kill someone early on, but you're doing so with the support of fellow crewmates, which makes all the difference. This strategy can also be highly dependent on the personalities of the players you're playing with, but that's another conversation. Try it and see what works. It's all about presentation and the relationships you build. So be confident in your convictions and accurate in your executions for the best possible blend thrall game as Marine. And that's it. A complete guide to playing as the Marine in Dreadhunger. Marine is one of the funnest characters to play in Dreadhunger, largely due to his starting item. Being equipped with such a strong weapon early on brings great power, but it must also bring great responsibility. Using it well is just as important as keeping it out of enemy hands. I hope this guide has answered any and all questions you had about the Marine, but if you still have anything you'd like to ask me, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it ASAP. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel for more Dreadhunger videos. Thank you all very much for watching, good luck with all your endeavours, and remember to think just a little bit different.